Howdy folks, so this is going to be a short tutorial on how to export your models correctly from Blender to Maya. As anyone who has tried to do so, I'm sure they've realized they've had scale issues and there's usually some stuff that doesn't translate correctly. So I'm just going to go over what you do need to do to set your file up correctly so it will export correctly and the settings that you should choose so your file is right. So first of all, well, let's go over the modifiers that uh, are and aren't allowed. So if you have something like Array or you know, solidify that you want to apply, uh, you could leave it on and choose the option to apply when you export. And for the most part, most modifiers are pretty straightforward, but the subdivision in particular, if anybody knows, please write in the comments. Um, but I've found what I think is a bug and I, I can't fully explain it. So if you have subdivision on and it's like enabled and you export and you get it to apply, of course it's gonna export like a subdivided model. But a thing I've noticed is if you disable it and you export, when you export, you, first of all, I suggest always exporting in Alembic as it's generally the most stable file format and it's better at, you know, containing all the information that you do need uh, pass forward. Like it, you can also export like animation and stuff with it, which can potentially be handy. So under object options, there is an option to apply subdivisions. Even if you have the modifier on and it's disabled, and even if you don't have apply checked on, there's still a random chance it will apply your subdivision when you export it. So what I recommend doing, especially if you have a lot of objects, like if you've just one, obviously just delete the modifier, but if you have a lot of objects um, that you don't want subdivision added to, uh, just turn it to mesh, it'll collapse the modifier. If you have, especially if you have no other modifiers on your object, then you don't have to worry about it. This is also a quick way to apply things like shrink wrap mirror and your subdiv all in one go, right? So that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, and other than that, I would generally just apply all your modifiers that you do want to carry forward. If it's something like a triangulate where you don't want to apply it because it'll change the geometry, that's generally pretty safe. But yeah, just subdivision in particular is something to look out for. So you won't be able to export that. Another thing is curves. Um, if you have curve geometry in your scene and you want this to export to Maya, you have to convert it to mesh first because it's not going to work correctly. Um, curves are, I'm going to say they're a lot more complex in Blender, I assume. There's a lot more information in them and Maya just doesn't know how to read them and they just they just will not work. So don't expect that to work. Um, UVs will translate quite well. Um, just one thing to keep in mind is when you export Alembics from Maya to Blender, the option for writing UV sets is off by default but when you export from Blender to Maya, it's on by default. So if, again, if you're in a production context and you're modeling, you're doing model work on something that already has UVs and you need to maintain those UVs, just f don't forget to enable the check mark on Maya because you might be used to it from Blender side, not having to check it on, but you do in this case if you're, if you're exporting out of Maya. So that's one thing to be aware of. Um, the other really critical thing in terms of why the scale hasn't been working is probably your scene settings. So by default, Blender is a scale that is 100 times smaller than Maya. And actually Blender talks to Houdini better than it talks to Maya because the native scale for both Blender and Houdini is the same. So that is controlled by the this units here. In order for objects to export correctly to Maya, you just have to set this value to be 0.1 and then your scene is correct. So now I can see like before, I did that if I just undo that really quick my cube is two meters in space and if I set it to 0.1 now it's 0 0.02 meters so it just became significantly smaller so all your objects are going to be gigantic in blender in order to compensate um actually they're going to be that times gigantic in blender and I'm sure you'll notice that uh they disappear from viewport and nothing really works from this distance so you got to go to view this is um, typically set quite high for working at Maya scale. I would probably go to like 0.1 and then I tend to default to going to like a thousand that tends to encompass most things. If you're working on a set, you might have to set it higher than that even. But if you set it too high, then when you enter um, orthographic mode, it's not really gonna happen with a cube. But if you have any sort of objects with like closer surfaces, you might see Z fighting in the viewport where there is none. And it's just your, your clipping setting being set really high. Another thing to consider is if you're using like physics to place models, for example, they might be kind of wonky at this scale. So you'll have to like scale your models down that you wanna do physics with, apply them and then collapse it out. Hopefully like if you're dropping coins or something and you need the position of the coins, 
uh, that's going to be your only option in order to get it to translate to Maya correctly. Um, but yeah, so scene scale, pretty important. Uh, which unit you're using doesn't really matter, but honestly the scene scale is the most important thing. Uh, another thing to keep in mind too with this viewport setting is if you create a camera, the camera is going to have the same issue. You'll also need to have to set this a little bit higher. Uh, usually point, point zero 0.01 is, is, is fine, but then, then your objects will display correctly. And then when you go to export them, they will be correct. Um, another thing to keep in mind is the sharpness of your edges. Um, doesn't really translate super well. It can, but I've noticed some issues with it. In general, it's better to have an object with like all sharp edges or all smoothed edges, just so you can apply them more easily in Maya. Um, sometimes it's fine, but sometimes it acts up a little bit. I do notice too, if you export a model from Maya into Blender, the normals can get kind of messed up, in which case um, you just type in average normals. It's not really going to happen in this case because this is an object created in Blender, so it's fine. But essentially what that's doing is like auto, like enabling this auto smooth and kind of like disabling the like the face value of it essentially and it's like it kind of breaks it but it basically it makes it so that it's not really using this anymore it's more using the surface um it's kind of hard to describe but uh essentially if you're if you're getting funky normals in blender and it was a model that came from maya average your normals and that'll probably fix it you might have to do that multiple times as you're working because as you extrude and change faces and stuff like that it's not going to update that normal information so you have to kind of keep refreshing it which is the downside, but at least it'll display correctly. So that's something. Um, last thing to keep in mind is any special edge markings that you're using in Blender won't translate correctly. So if you have, if you're using creases, for example, in Blender for your modeling, you have to physically build those holding edges um, before you export to Maya, because this is something that won't that won't carry over. But otherwise, if, as long as you're not using any like Blender specific tricks and it's all like basic collapsed geometry, you shouldn't really have any problems. Um, just make sure, of course, you check your face orientation because in Blender, um, I tend to have the back faces visible at all times because I find the culling can sometimes be distracting with some modeling. And often I forget to check this and then I get gets into Maya and I have some black objects and it's like, ah, shoot. So yeah, that's just some things to go through. Uh, one last little thing to mention as well is the UV maps um, in Blender. The default name is UV map, but in Maya it's map one. This could matter. Again, it's more of a production context thing where it may or may not matter, but it matters in the context of if there needs to be specific UVs assigned to map one. And if you bring in an object from Blender, it's going to create a secondary map and your object may be looking at the wrong UVs and then displaying your materials incorrectly. So it's just something to be aware of to, to watch that you don't have two maps if you're like having display issues in Maya. So those are just some troubleshooty things to watch out for. Definitely the most important thing though is setting this unit scale. As long as that is set to 0 0.01, you shouldn't have any problems. And yeah, just be aware of when you are exporting your Alembic, always remember to have selected objects on. Uh, generally, most things are not gonna be enabled. I tend to always just set to one frame. There's not usually, I need animation. Um, and then I tend to just disable these because then it'll export a little quicker. I mean, obviously if you are using them, then you need to check that on, but generally you're not, especially as modelers. And yeah, that is how you export to Maya and hopefully you have no problems and good luck and uh, good day.